So let's talk about the problem of overfitting in our data models or the machine learning models that we have built so far. In this tutorial, we are going to consider the linear regression and we are going to see what is the problem of overfitting and how we can resolve this problem. So in linear regression, we have used the housing prices example where we have plotted a graph that contains the housing prices data set. So now I'm going to show you some graphs based on which we can understand what is overfitting. So let's consider this first graph here. This first graph is price versus size graph. You can see that the red points represent the sample data or the training set of housing prices. Now let's say we come up with a linear regression model and we come up with a line something like this after calculating the cost function and gradient descent. Now you can see that this line is passing through only two points and most of the points does not lie on the line. Now let's consider the second graph in which we have the price versus size, the same data set, but instead of a linear regression, we have a curve. So the hypothesis function of this curve will not be linear. And you can see that this curve is actually trying to fit most of the data points. Now consider this graph. In this graph, we again have the same training data, but you can see that the hypothesis function that we have come up with is a very complicated function because it has so many curves in it. The reason being is that the hypothesis function is too complex and it is trying to fit all the data points no matter how many curves are coming in the function. So in the first case in this graph, we have the hypothesis function as theta 0 plus theta 1 x, which means that this is a linear function. Now you can see that this type of function or this type of hypothesis function is not a good fit for my data set. So we call this example, this first example as underfit. Now consider this graph here. In this graph, we have just one uh, square variable of x2 square. You can see it's not a linear regression now. So this curve is trying to pass through most of the data points. Now consider the third graph, which is a complex function. You can see it contains so many polynomials of power three and even four which leads to so many curves and since it is trying to overfit my data set that's why we have a complicated function so the first example is of underfit or sometimes we refer it to as high bias the second one as you can see is right is just right for our data set or i can say it's best fit for my data set the third one is an example of an overfit because I am using a function which is too complex and the curves you can see here there are so many curves in it will be able will pose some problems in placing or in generalizing new examples. So overfitting is also known as high variance. Now let's try to define underfitting and overfitting. So underfitting or high bias is when the form of our hypothesis function H maps poorly to the trend of the data, which means that it is not passing through most of the data points. And it is usually caused by the function that is too simple or uses too few features. Now you can see here it is using only a single feature which is x. 
In this example, we are using two features x1 and x2. And in the last one, we have x1, x2, x3, and x4. So we have so many features. So we need to just reduce some of the features and we can come up with this equation. So if we have an overfit example, if we will remove these terms somehow we will not consider the x4 and x3 feature we will get the equation of the best fit so overfitting is basically caused by a hypothesis function that fits the available data but it does not generalize well to predict new data and you know that it is caused by a complicated function that creates a lot of unnecessary curves and angles which is unrelated to the data. So now how can we solve this problem of overfitting? How can we address overfitting? Now the first way is to reduce the number of features manually. So you know that if you will remove the x3 and x4 feature manually, you will get a best fit. But it happens most of the time that we require all the features. So we require the x1, x2, x3, x4 in the equation because they have their significance. In that case, we will use regularization to address overfitting or to solve the problem of overfitting. Now in regularization, we can either keep all the features and reduce the magnitude of the parameters theta. So if I will reduce the parameters theta, we have features x3 and x4 multiplied by in the equation. So if I will decrease the magnitude of theta, the terms of x1 and of x3 and x4 will become insignificant. Now this works well when we have a lot of slightly significant features. So x3 and x4 can be those features which are also significant features and they help in generalizing some new examples.